In this A-level accounting ratio analysis video, we'll be focusing on liquidity ratios. What is liquidity? Liquidity refers to the amount of money that a business has available to use to operate on a day-to-day -day basis. Because current assets, such as inventory and trade receivables, are readily convertible into money, they are included here too. In other words, a business can convert its current assets into money in order to pay the costs of running the business and pay their current liabilities when they become due for payment. So how are current assets converted into money? Let's start with trade receivables. Remember that trade receivables refers to money being owed to the business by customers as a result of a credit sale transaction. This is converted into money simply by collecting that money that's owed from the customers. The other main example of current assets is inventory. Inventory can be converted into money in two ways. Firstly, by the inventory being sold to customers who pay immediately. And secondly, the inventory being sold via a credit sale transaction to customers, thereby resulting in trade receivables. The trade receivables are then converted into money by the business collecting that money from the customers. Notice then that via this route, inventory can be slower to convert into money. And this is an important fact later on when we have a look at the ratios. So bear this in mind. Liquidity ratios compare the level of current assets to the level of current liabilities at a point in time to consider how likely it is that a business will be able to pay their current liabilities when they become due for payment. We'll be studying two ratios, the current ratio and the liquid capital ratio, which is also known as the acid test ratio or the quick ratio. We'll be using an example. This is an extract of a statement of financial position showing assets and current liabilities. We'll use this example to work through some examples of calculations of ratios through the rest of this video. Let's start with the current ratio. The current ratio compares current assets to current liabilities. Notice that the two dots in the middle there mean compared to, or sometimes that's just abbreviated to the word to. So current assets to current liabilities. Notice that this is an actual ratio then, and it should be expressed in the form x, where x is a number, to 1. I'll show you how we do this when we work through our example. So let's use the example that I referred to a moment ago. So here in the red rectangle is the example I showed you a moment ago. The first thing to do is to write down the total current assets, 1,019,000, then the symbol showing compared to, which is the two dots, and then the total figure for current liabilities, 525,000. Next, we need to simplify this ratio. We do this by dividing the first number by the second number. 1,019,000 divided by 525,000 is equal to 1.94. Therefore, we can write the answer down that the current ratio is equal to 1.94 to 1. Notice that I've shown the answer here to two decimal places, and that's because I think this is an appropriate level of accuracy to show. So what does this mean? You can interpret it, it as meaning that for every one pound of current liabilities, there is one pound 94 of current assets. The current ratio indicates whether the business is likely to be able to pay its current liabilities when they become due, either using cash or a current asset that is easily convertible into cash. Notice the word likely in this description. We're not saying it's certain, but it's likely or unlikely whether the business can afford to pay those current liabilities. An ideal ratio is often considered to be two to one although some businesses can operate with a lower ratio than this, notably retail businesses. A ratio lower than 2 to 1 might be considered risky because it might indicate that the business is unlikely to be able to pay the current liabilities when they become due to be paid. 
a ratio higher than, for example, three to one, might be considered inefficient, in that the business might be considered to have too many current assets. They're not making good use of the current assets that are available to it. For example, instead of keeping money in the form of cash or money in the bank, they could use that to pay for, for example, training the staff or paying for advertising or investing in some non-current assets. An improvement in the current ratio is where the ratio over time moves towards the ideal level. Let me explain what I mean by this. Let's imagine that we're going to use this straight line to represent the levels of the current ratio. Let's imagine that we have a business whose current ratio stands at 1.6 to 1. The ideal, let's say, is being regarded as 2 to 1. The ratio is considered to be improving when there is a movement over time towards that ideal level. So in this example, an improvement would be an increase in the ratio towards that ideal level of 2 to 1. So in this case, an increase from 1.6 to 1 to, for example, 1.7 to 1 the following year would show an improvement. However, an increase is not always an improvement. Let me explain why. Let's imagine we have a different business whose current ratio is 2.7 to 1. Remember that an improvement is a movement over time towards the ideal level. So in this case, an improvement would actually be a decrease in the ratio towards that ideal level. So for example, in this case, a decrease from 2.7 to 1 to 2.5 to 1 the following year would show an improvement. So therefore, to identify if a trend is an improvement or a deterioration, look at whether the ratio is moving towards or away from the ideal level. Here's an example. This table shows the current ratio over four years. The question is, is the business's current ratio improving or getting worse over time? What do you think? The ratio has improved. Previously, it was too high, indicating levels of inventory, trade receivables or cash that were too high. And this year, the current ratio stands at a level that is very close to the ideal. So what are possible reasons for this improvement? It could be a reduction in overall inventory levels. It could be that the business has ensured that spare cash has been invested. Or it could be repayment of a loan. If the current ratio was too low, how could a business, with that being the case, increase their current ratio towards the ideal level? Well, typically here, the methods a business can use involve increasing the amount of money being in the business without affecting the other current assets. So ways of doing this include taking out a loan, selling non-current assets, or selling shares. I hope you're enjoying this video. Subscribe us to our website www.studytheeasyway.com have access to a full range of topic videos like this one that cover the whole A-level accounting syllabus. In addition there are worksheets with fully explained answers and multiple choice quizzes that give you immediate feedback with a score and answers to the questions. There are also a full range of revision resources ready for when you're preparing for main exams. Let's move on now and talk about the liquid capital ratio, which is similar in many respects to the ratio we've just looked at. The liquid capital ratio compares the current assets excluding the inventory to the current liabilities. This is because inventory is considered to be slow to convert into money. Notice that this is also a ratio and should be expressed in the form x, where x is a number, compared to 1. This is similar to before. So let's have a look at our example again. The first thing to do is to write down the total current assets of 1,019,000 and 
and deduct from this the inventory of 516,000. We then put in the comparison sign, the two dots, and then the level of total current liabilities, 525,000. The next thing to do is to do the minus sum and to jot down the answer. 1,019,000 less 516,000 is 503,000. So I've written that down first. Once we've done this, we can now simplify the ratio by dividing the first number by the second number. 503,000 divided by 525,000 is equal to 0.96. Notice that, as before, I've shown the answer to two decimal places. So what does this mean? You can interpret this as meaning that for every one pound of current liabilities, there are 96 pence of liquid current assets. The term liquid current assets refers to current assets excluding the inventory, because the word liquid refers to um, being easy to convert into money. So the liquid capital ratio compares liquid current assets in other words, the current assets excluding the inventory, which is slow to convert into cash, to the current liabilities. The ideal ratio is often considered to be one to one, although, as before, some businesses can operate with a lower ratio than this. A ratio lower than one to one might well be considered risky, because it indicates that the business might not have enough current assets to pay the current liabilities when they become due for payment. A ratio higher than, for example, 1.5 to 1 might be considered an inefficient use of the business's resources in terms of their current assets that could be put to better use. Again, we have this concept of an improvement being a movement towards the ideal. So let's go through that one more time. Again, I'm going to represent the ratio using this straight line. Let's imagine that we have a business whose current um, liquid capital ratio is 0.75 to 1. And remember that the ideal is generally considered to be 1 to 1. Remember that an improvement then is where we have the ratio moving over time towards that ideal level. So in this example, an Im increase in the ratio towards that ideal level would be an improvement. So for example, an increase from 0.75 to 1 to 0.82 to 1 the following year would show an improvement. But as before, an increase is not always an improvement. And let's look at an example of that. Imagine that you have a business whose liquid capital ratio is 1.6 to 1. Remember that an improvement is a movement towards that ideal level. So in this case, an improvement would be a decrease in the liquid capital ratio towards the ideal level. So, for example, a decrease from 1.6 to 1 to 1.4 to 1 the following year would show an improvement. So, exactly as before, to identify if a trend is an improvement or is a deterioration, look at if the ratio is moving towards or away from the ideal level. Here's an example. Let's look at the trend over time. Is this an improvement or a deterioration in the, in the liquid capital ratio? Well, the answer here is that it's remained stable. Although there is a slight reduction from 0.99 to 0.96, this is only a small change. And so here, the level has remained basically stable and it's very close to the ideal. That completes our work then on the liquidity ratios. Subscribers to www.studytheeasyway.com have access to a full range of topic resources. These can be accessed via the easy to use topic menus. After you click on the button, then this takes you to the full range of resources for that particular topic. This includes a full range of topic videos covering absolutely everything that you need to know for A-level accounting, as well as resources such as worksheets with answers, and multiple choice quizzes that give you a score and immediate answers to those questions. Please check out the website 
where you'll find freebie resources that you can use before making a decision as to whether or not to subscribe to the full range of resources. You can also find us on social media, where our Instagram account is updated every week with check your knowledge questions that are completely free to use. Please remember to visit our website www.studytheeasyway.com to find out more. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it's been useful.